What is up everybody and welcome back to the channel. We're going to look at the top five questions that will probably come up in the 2025 Year 6 Math Sats papers. Let's waste no time. Let's go with question one. So question one says we have two plus three and then we have this weird little three hanging around in the air. So obviously we need to know what that means. Well, if we have a number and then we have this strange number in the sky, what it means is we have two to the power of two, or in other words, two lots of two, two times two. If we have three to the power of two, it means three times three, or in other words, two, one, two sets of three. So if we have three to the power of three, what it means is I've got three times three times three, or in other words, three, one, two, three, lots of three. So in this case, I have three to the power of three. So three to the power of three is three times three times three. But at the start, we had two plus. Now, if we look back at our bod mass, we can see O means order, which is what we call these powers here. So this is the first part we must solve before we add the two to it. And three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. Now I can put my two plus, two plus 27 equals 29. I have a specific bod mass video on my channel if we don't understand bod mass, but essentially bod mass stands for brackets, we would solve first, then the order, then division, multiplication, addition, and then subtraction. But let's jump to question two. Question two says match each fraction to its equivalent simplified fraction. Some horrible words in here. Equivalent just means the same. Simplified means its simplest form, the smallest numbers representing that fraction. One has been done for you. That's very kind of them, isn't it? So I have 12 eighteenths is equivalent to thirds. Well, how do we know that? Well, let's rewrite my questions over here. 12 eighteenths and 2 thirds. I went from 12 to 2 by dividing by 6 and 18 to 3 by also dividing by 6. So because we've done the divide by 6 for both, we know it's equivalent and 2 thirds is the simplified fraction. So let's check another one. Let's do 12 twentieths. Well, 12 twentieths, let's check it against 4 fifths. 4 fifths. If I go from 12 to 4, I'm dividing by 3. But if I divide 20 by 3, I do not get to 5. So we know it can't be 4 fifths. Let's check 3 fifths. 12 down to 3 is divide by 4. And 20 down to 5 is divide by 4. So therefore, 3 fifths is the equivalent fraction of 12 twentieths. There we go. Another one done for us. Beautiful. Let's try another one. 12 fifteenths. Let's check it against 4 fifths. I think we're going to get lucky here. How do we get from 12 to 4? I divided by 3. How do I get from 15 to 5? Also divided by 3. There we go. And therefore, 12 sixteenths should be paired with 3 fourths. But let's check. 12 sixteenths, 3 fourths. 12 down to 3 is divided by 4. 16 down to 4 is also divided by 4. They've been quite nice to us, giving us nice, simple divisions with only 3s and 4s. Not a tricky question. 15.5 divided by 100. These kind of questions are always in the SATS papers. We must know how to solve this. And to solve this, we are going to use our place value chart. We're going to know that if we are using place value chart, we can simply just move two spaces down. So let's create my place value chart. Here we go. 15.5. I need ones, tens, hundreds. Put by my decimal, tenths one hundredths, one thousand. So I'm going to put, and I'm ready to begin. 15.5 is one ten, five ones, point five. And if I'm dividing by a hundred, what I need to understand is that every jump down my place value chart is dividing by ten. If I put a one in the tenths column, and I move it into the ones column, it has got ten times smaller. Or in other words, it has been divided by ten. So when I'm dividing by 100, I'm going to be taking two jumps. Because 100 is just a number divided by 10 and then divided by another 10. So this would be divided by 100. 
So therefore, everything needs to move two spaces. Let's move this one, one, two into the tens column, the five, one, two into the hundreds column, and the other five, one, two into the thousandths column. Put by my decimal at the start and put a zero there if I want to. And my final answer, 0 0.155 or 0.155 if I want to be shorthand. Always in the year six sats, learn to use your place value charts, guys. Question four, Emma thinks of a number. She says, I multiply my number by two. I then add 11. I divide by three and my answer is nine. So her number, she multiplied by two. She divided by three and her answer equaled nine. So because we've got our missing value in the question, we need to put this towards the end. So we're going to be doing the inverse. So let's start with her nine and let's go backwards this time. But we're now using inverse operations, which means we use the opposite operation to what it says. So instead of dividing by three, I'm going to multiply by three, which is 27. So 27, then we, she added 11, but we're going to take away 11 equals 16. And then multiply by two, we're going to divide by two equals eight. Simple. All we need to know is that because our missing value is at the start and we needed it at the end, we have to do the inverse. So if we're doing inverse, we could just start from the number that she's got at the end and go backwards doing the opposite operations. Question five, our last one. The temperature in a freezer is minus 40 degrees Celsius. The temperature increased by 10 degrees. What's the new temperature? Well, there's some keywords in here. Minus 40, increase and 10 degrees. Well, if we're at minus 40, that means we're miles down here on our temperature gauge at minus 40. If it increases, it's not going to get colder. That would be decreases. It's going to be getting hotter. If it's getting hotter 10 degrees, it's going all the way to minus 30. So our new temperature is minus 30. And they've been very kind in giving you the units, so you can't make an easy mistake. Simple question, but it's one that people make a lot of mistakes on. They get their minus 40, and because it says increase by 10, they think the number has to get bigger, so it should be minus 50. But it actually, because we're in the negatives, that would be decreasing. And there you have it. That is five very good questions that are going to come up in the year six, 2025 SAT. Learn how to do them and get those extra five marks. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully, you'll do, join me in another video or even at mathshelter.com. But for now, I'm going to see you soon. Peace out.